Este într-adevăr un mare har ca să fim împreună în casa Domnului și să ne vedem fețele și mai ales să participăm la această sărbătoare minunată din această zi. Dragii mei, cuvântul Domnului răsună și chiar în cuvinte puține, dumneavoastră sunteți gata ca să ascultați și să primiți ceea ce Domnul ne vorbește și haideți pentru toate să-i mulțumim lui Dumnezeu. Mă bucur, cum spunea și fratele Vasile, că vedem pe unii frați pe care nu i-am văzut mai de mult. Mulțumim Domnului și pentru familia Cristurian, care sunt împreună cu noi în dimineața aceasta. Domnul să-i mânghe în continuare și Domnul să-i binecuvinteze. Ei transmit mulțumire fraților și surorilor care au fost alături de ei în această perioadă. Domnul să fie slăvit! I only have a few minutes this morning and I would like to address in English because we have so many young people who are getting ready to take communion alongside with the parents and grandparents who are here. And uh, I want to tell you that one of the most accurate prophetic description of the Lord Jesus Christ we find in Isaiah chapter 53. We read Isaiah 53, if you uh, were not here, or if you didn't pay attention, open your Bible, pull out your phone, and bring up Isaiah 53, and follow the verses there, because it's in front of us on this last day of communion of 2020, we have the person and the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And um, I want to ask you to direct your attention to one image out of this text. And that image is found in verse 7. And the Bible said, He was oppressed and afflicted, yet He did not open His mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. I'd like us to meditate for a couple of moments on this image of Jesus Christ. He was like a sheep before his or her, uh, before its shearers. And he was like a lamb that was led to the slaughterhouse. In many Bible verses, and even here in verse 6, we find the image of the people in general, and they're presented as the sheep. And in verse 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Like we don't have a shepherd, and we all gone astray. The psalmist in Psalm 119, verse 176, says, I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commandments. However, in this particular verse, in verse 7, Jesus Christ is presented and is seen by the prophet Isaiah as a sheep himself. Jesus Christ. And we know that the Lord Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 11, talks about himself and he says, I am the sheep, not. I am the good shepherd. Amen? The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd, Jesus Christ, lays down his life for the sheep. But on the vision of Isaiah, in verse 7, Jesus is presented in this way for one reason. And for this reason, I believe it's very important for us to understand Today, before we take communion, Jesus was silent. 
Jesus was silent when he could have spoken. He spoke to multitudes for three and a half years. And people were touched. People were healed. People were crying out and saying, Lord, what shall we do? One particular man one day said, Lord, if I've done any inequity, I'm going to give it back fourfold. Because Jesus was speaking. But listen to this vision that I say ahead of Jesus. He did not open his mouth and he did not speak to defend himself at all. He did not do that. And um, I want to bring to you the re, uh, four, four occasions where Jesus could have spoken. First, we know from the New Testament, from the Gospels, that Jesus was silent before his judges. He was before the great priest, Anna and Caiapha. The great priest before Pilate, the governor, he could have said words to defend himself, but he chose not to defend himself. We all know the Bible verses very well. In uh, John chapter 19, verse 26, it says, When Jesus saw his mother there, Jesus was on the cross. And we all know that he spoke a few words from the cross. And also during the court trial, so to speak, he spoke a few words. But he never spoke to defend himself, but he spoke to the defense of others. And from the cross, Jesus saw his mother. And he said to her, woman, here is your son. And he showed to John, and he, to, uh, and, uh, and he said to John and to the disciples, here is your mother. And the Bible says from that time on, his disciples, this disciple took her into his home, took Mary to take care of her into his home. Aldoila um, look, the second point where he could have said something was when he could have complained or protested against the bad treatment from the Roman soldiers. They ridicule him. They beat him. And he did not open his mouth. He remained silent. In Matthew 26, verse 67 says, Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fist. Others slapped him. But what did Jesus do? He did not open his mouth. He remained silent. Jesus did not complain or protest against you and I, brothers and sisters. Young people, Jesus had the capacity as the eternal Son of God to look over the times and see you and see us. And he didn't complain. He was about to die for our sins. Do you imagine that this morning? Are you ready to take that in? And what did he do? He remained silent like a sheep before its shearers. Like a lamb that was led to the slaughter, he remained silent. He saw our indifference, our lack of dedication, our unholy behavior, our lack of faith, our lack of love. He saw us, and he was ready to die for you and for me. Praise his holy name forever. Another point I want to make that Jesus did not protest or complain against God the Father. He was ready to die according to the plan of the Father. 
And he didn't complain. He didn't say, Father, why did you make up this plan? Couldn't you figure out another way to save the sinners? He didn't complain. We remember from Genesis chapter 4 that Cain, after he killed his brother, he heard the judgment of God. And what did he do? He went before God and said, my punishment is more than I can bear. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus was able to accept, and he was ready to accept the will of God. And I want to give you three answers why he was silent, and Isaiah saw him this way. First, he desired to be obedient to God. Jesus was silent because his desire was to be obedient to the Father, to the one who sent him. I want to challenge you this morning, young people, brothers and sisters who are ready to take communion today. Let this be your most important desire in your heart, to be obedient to the Word of God and to be obedient to God. Matthew chapter 7, we read from the uh, preaching of Jesus on the mountain. He said, Therefore, everyone who hears those words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. May all of us be wise people. God help us. The second reason, Jesus knew his purpose. He came on this earth to die. He came on this earth to die. Many times we forget our purpose. Our purpose is to serve the Lord who did everything for us. Our purpose is to die if that is the will of God. Our purpose is not to seek comfort and not to stay indifferent. Our purpose is to serve the Lord. And may His purpose be fulfilled into the young people's life who are here today. May His purpose be fulfilled in my life and in your life. In this time of pandemic, there's danger all around us. We're being told to stay away, to be scared. But you know what? God has a purpose with my wife with my life. I may be locked up in my room, make sure that there's no way for any disease to come there, but still I would not be fulfilling the will of God. And you could do the same, but you're here today because you're here for a purpose, and we want God to be glorified in our lives. Amen? And the last reason why Jesus was silent is because Jesus wanted to give us an example. Jesus is our example, your example, brothers and sisters. When everybody protests, we are to prioritize the work of the kingdom before protest. Amen? Not to be preoccupied of the discour or discouraged with the injustice around us, but rather with showing others the love of God. To show them the way out of the darkness into the light. Help us, Lord. A time of COVID pandemic, people electing the worst from among us to lead the country. On the time where everybody is happy for abortions, and suicide and shootings and unchecked crime of all kinds of different crimes. Depression, homelessness, hopelessness, human rights violation. On a time like that, let's look at Jesus. In this time of communion, let's look at Jesus and follow his example. And say, Lord, use me. I want your will to be done with my life. Amen? Are you ready to do all of that? As we take the communion, we partake the body and the blood of Jesus. The very nature of Jesus into our beings. We follow the Lord. 
we follow his example, we obey the will of God and what we read about in the Bible. This is our desire today. We're here to have new life. Not live like the people outside, but live the new life given us to God. May God bless each and every one of you, brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you.